this one is um, sort of talking, I suppose we call it about the birds and the bees, um, although maybe that's part of the, the problem, is using, uh, <laughs> using the wrong, wrong terminology uh, for, uh, for genitalia, for, you know, for talking in and around sex and everything to do with that. Um, so I know Nathan's going to bite my head off if I keep talking. So stream straight in, mate. Go on. You're the, you're well, the, <laughs> I know you're key no, in a good way. I, I, um, yeah, I, I love talking about private parts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. Um, it's more, I think, I think talking about sex and the whole sex education thing is a completely different scenario within itself. So maybe we can do um, a, a debate about that at one point, but it's more around um, how schools are trying to teach children the appropriate terminology for their genitals and how uh, they're wanting to start drip feeding in a little bit earlier than perhaps they may have done in the past. So I think they're wanting to start doing it at, at around preschool age now, I think, um, but parents are... Um, arguing back and fighting back because they think that it's inappropriate for a boy to name his penis a penis and a girl to name their vagina a vagina. Or their vulva a vulva. Yeah. Just want to get the terminology correct. Yeah, yeah, I don't, absolutely. I, don't I really don't understand when it comes to that. It's like, okay, I know we want to protect our kids from sex. You're a boy, you're born with a penis, you're a girl, you have a vagina. And <laughs> I'm like, why are you trying to protect them from that? Is, is there's no sexualization to it, it's parts they actually have and parts mm -hmm. that most likely have for the rest of their lives. So what is the the drama? That's that's the bit I don't get. So what do your kids call them? Well, Sebastian calls his penis a willy. That's simple. Always called it a willy. And Ava always calls it because Vaj Vaj. That's what she calls it. Vaj Vaj. I mean, that's that's <laughs> fair, isn't it? And do you know what? I don't I don't have an issue with parents using other terminology. Like mm. I have no issue with it. Mm. I prefer myself and we prefer ourselves to use terminology and um it's it's funny how you pulled me up straight away dan with talking about vulva and it's it's interesting to to go i guess i want to say that far because i think at a young age that can become quite confusing i'm okay to start doing it as as he maybe gets a little bit older or she gets they get a little bit older but i feel like penis and vagina is is a, a pretty much standard standard word isn't it like mm -hmm. to then to then turn around and say okay so it's not just your vagina it's your vulva this is this is this this is that this is it, it, it becomes a little bit confusing for them so i'm perfectly okay with with a girl calling her vagina a vagina overall Okay, yeah, no, the reason I brought it up is because most of the time people aren't actually speaking about their vagina, they are speaking about their vulva. So yeah. that's, uh, and you know, the sex therapist in me can't let it go. So, um, <laughs> uh, so this is, but, um, but yeah, you know, that's slightly tongue in cheek. But uh, I think actually we possibly get a bit more confused and actually we're the same as you, Nathan, you know, my, my son doesn't, um, actually, you know, actually use words for his yet because he's too young but obviously but um but you know i call his penis his penis and you know that's uh when you know when we're talking to him we're in the bath he's got to the stage where he likes to point at it a lot <laughs> like, standard boy yeah standard boy, standard boy. Yeah, that's, ne <laughs> that's never gonna <laughs> stop it's never gonna stop is it we never stop pointing at it <laughs> as soon as it's out yeah, Just, yeah. You know, in the bath um, yeah yeah. You know, I did not know that was a thing until I ha until we we started having that nephews and then it's like literally the hand is literally always down there yeah, looking yeah. at it and touching it. I'm like, is that a thing? I didn't realize until my nephew <laughs> came along. And my son does the same thing. I'm like, really? You 
can't leave it alone for a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, when I see him do those things and when I, you know, at the same thing that we do with everything else, if he points, because he's at that age where we're sort of learning words and we're naming things. And if he, you know, points at the, the bath, I say that's the bath. If he points at, you know, anything else, I say what it is. And when he points at that, I go, yeah, that's your penis. <laughs> then we can like, and, uh, and, you know, that's what we plan on that's certainly what we what we plan on calling it and if you know when our next one comes along in a few months if that's a girl we'll plan on using correct terminology for them too so um because actually i think a lot of the evidence that's evolving around it even though for some reason that creates a lot of fear in, in, in some people's you know the evidence is actually that it's um supportive of desexualization and it's supportive mm -hmm. of um uh, you know it supports children actually being able to name and protect themselves more than terms like um you know willy nunny whatever kids want to use for their for their genitals i mean one of the one of the main pieces of research that came out which kind of sparked this whole debate was um it's it quite an, an awful story actually and i feel sorry for the for the teacher that was actually involved in in the story but uh, a small a small girl, I can't remember her age, would go to school and she went to class and she would always tell her teacher, and I think this happened for nearly two weeks, almost every single day, that her uncle licked her cookie. And the teacher, you know, she, she did the right thing. She was very validating and said, um, if you don't want him to lick your cookie, then tell, tell him that it's your cookie. And the teacher didn't even think mm. about what she meant. The teacher literally thought that she was referring to an actual biscuit. Mm. Until one day in school, she heard this little girl referring to her vagina as her cookie. So then she got a little bit freaked out and she went and she, she kind of did a bit of a, a report, if you like. I can't remember what she did. Um, and it turns out that she had been uh, sexually abused by her uncle for a very long time. Mm. And if she was using correct terminology, it would never have been there, probably. Well, might have come out earlier. Uh, yeah, it would have probably been flagged a bit a bit sooner, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's but awful. Also, it, it links into... There was another thing that I read that was that, obviously, if you if you don't teach them the correct terminology in some way you're almost instilling guilt and shame and you know that the, the mm -hmm. real word is dirty almost and obviously mm -hmm. you know dan and, and nathan you'll know a lot more than i do about this but you know even now there's still a lot of you know uh, more so i would argue i suppose with women that there's still a you know a very taboo side to uh, you know things like you know masturbation and stuff and all that starts does start very early because there is very much this, you know, yeah, you should be ashamed. It's dirty to talk about this sort of stuff. It's only really now, I would argue, that we're getting more and more open about it. And one of the ways that, that you know, this article I read said was, yeah, give them the correct terminology. Like you say, don't call it, you know, silly names as if it isn't a real, as if it isn't a real thing, you know, like cookie and things like that, which I get, you know, it is, I suppose the thing, the, but then the flip side of that is you don't want to hear your child using, I suppose, words that maybe take away from their innocence almost you know it took the first time you hear you know the first time i heard my heard my son say i've done a big poo you know that as funny as it is it's kind of like you know you're aware they're growing up and it takes it take yeah the sort of the yeah i don't know do you, do you see what i'm saying with that it's kind of it's both ways i guess i do i completely understand where you're coming mm. from and I, and I understand why um parents will like use all of these funny funny little words but we literally don't do it for anything else mm. Like mm. a leg is a leg a chair is a chair your eyeball is your eyeball jackson asked what those things were in his throat the other day and it's like mate that's your tonsils he was reading mm. a book and then he was looking in the mirror asking trying to find his um so it's like what are they and that that is your tonsils that's your tongue that that's your nipples like because because they're, they're not they're not very formed as small children are they so they don't have like mm. man boobs like i do and they don't have they don't have breasts like their their mums might do um they just have a nipple and it's like well what's this is this a spot and it's like no that's your nipple he's like are you sure and he's like trying to pull it off and he's trying to squeeze it and i'm like <laughs> no that's that's your nipple it's not going to come off 
I was like, are you sure? And he's like, have you got nipples? Yeah. Can I see your nipple? Yeah. Okay, fine. There you go. I've got a nipple too. And he's like, oh my God, yours are hairy. So yes, <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Cheers. But it's true, isn't it? It's fact. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, w- I won't I won't get into it too much, but um we got hit with the um where do babies come from question the other day. <laughs> and we didn't think we'd get that question for another few day a uh, few days, another few days. <laughs> yes. Yes. next week we'll be fine. We didn't have you scheduled in until next Tuesday. Can you come back? <laughs> but we but we were open with him. We told him. And that might be a little bit weird for, for some of you, I don't know. But we, we were open and we talked about having sex and we talked about what that involved for adults um, and how it's consensual and it still means that bodies are our own bodies, uh, belong to us, et cetera, et cetera, and all of that stuff. But it was like, oh, fuck. Too young for this, man. You've just turned three. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's the thing. another can, couple of years. <laughs> you, you can still educate in a um, in an age appropriate way yeah. without euphemisms. Yes. So that's the thing is I think that a lot of people's fear is if you use the words penises and vulvas and vaginas, that essentially you then have to explain, you know, in graphic detail how sex works and yeah. in graphic detail how this, if they answer it, no, things can still be, um, you know, age appropriate. You know, um, I actually, you know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with where the baby question comes from. Um, you know, in, um, you know, not having to explain anatomically what actually goes on during sex, but more actually about, um, you know, relationships and about how you know parts of mummy and parts of daddy can make or you know or whatever your family setup is i'm saying this and i'm not we're not mummy and daddy mm-hmm. so yeah. like in my family so um but you know it can all be age appropriate it doesn't have to be graphic or ever but you also don't need to use euphemisms and in fact actually i think you're more likely to run into confusion when you're, mm. when you're using euphemisms oh, God, about yeah. you know <laughs> you know putting whatever's into cookies and things like that and (laughs) just making things more confusing and I think what PJ said is really important actually you are subconsciously introducing shame um uh, into in into this and I and this is the thing we all sort of talk about you know when you talk about the loss of innocence that's because we've ascribed it you know actually once again that feeds into the the shame loop you know we've Mm. all grown up probably in a generation where people didn't think about this and it wasn't you know it was second nature you know I'm pretty sure all of us grew up with having euphemisms for our genitals um but actually we think about these things a bit more now and I think you know actually it's unlocking that shame loop and unlocking it and not ascribing any of it to innocence or loss of innocence it's literally a body part that everyone has yeah. Mine, I think, I think mine was was a widgie. What the fuck a is a widgie? What is a widgie? What is a widgie? It sounds, it sounds like, it sounds like a, it sounds like a bug. We like were, something... we were Willie and Minnie in our house. Yeah, I think that's what we a were. Widge. Widge or a widgie? <laughs> sounds like a country act, to be honest. That <laughs> Willie and Minnie. Well, I think it's after, <laughs> I think it's after Mickey and Minnie Mouse. That'll be it. Yeah, he yeah. was obviously Steamboat Willie. Okay, sure. So I think, okay. That's, I, I think that's where that comes from. At least give it its full title, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Steamboat. This is the Captain steamboat. Willy. <laughs> Thank you. There we are. Magic. You know where Steamboat is. <laughs> um.